Does your dog panic when they're left alone? Do they get really stressed even when you leave the room that they're in? Do they perhaps bark and pace or even nibble themselves when you leave them at home? Living with a dog who finds alone time really stressful can be difficult for everybody, both you and your dog. I'm Caroline, Certified Animal Behaviourist and Dog Trainer and I'm also the founder of Barket Place and I'm really excited to be here for today's expert series of videos alongside Doris Herbs who are the experts in herbal pet care. We're here to give you some advice and support in helping your dog to feel more safe and secure when left home alone. Separation anxiety covers a range of different behaviours that our dogs might display when left home alone and the reasons behind those different behaviours. So we might have a dog who's got isolation distress where they actually panic no matter who has left them because they just need somebody to be alongside them. Or they may have hyperattachment where they're really connected with one specific member of your household. They could also have a little bit of barrier frustration or they might panic about being confined when they're left home alone. And finally, it could be that actually your dog is just looking for a bit of fun when you leave them because perhaps they're a bit bored and maybe their welfare needs haven't quite been met in the right way. So we really want to understand the emotion behind our dog's behaviour so that we understand why they're feeling worried when they're home alone. And the best way to do this is to start by filming your dog. Filming your dog allows you to see at what point does your dog get stressed. It also allows us to see are they actually just barking at passers-by or perhaps a cat outside of your window. We can see whether they're looking to have some fun when you leave them or whether they panic that moment that you step outside the front door. There are plenty of ways that you can film your dog. You can utilise um, pet cameras, your mobile phone or your laptop. Pet cameras are great because they allow you to actually observe your dog when you're leaving them by using the app on your phone. And this means if you see any signs of distress, you can return to your dog immediately. It's also worth thinking about filming your dog at different times of the day, after different activities. So perhaps before a walk or after a walk, seeing whether they act any differently depending on who has actually left them or whether the whole household has gone out together. Understanding why your dog has started to display behaviours such as anxiety when you leave them home alone is really important. And if you're seeing a change in your dog's behaviour, it could be due to a number of reasons. So it could be a change in circumstances, something that's been highlighted massively during the past year's pandemic. Or it could be something simple as moving home. Or it could be a change in your family dynamic. Perhaps an older child has gone off to university or there's been a sad passing of a family member. It could also be related to something like cognitive decline as your dog is aging. Or it can be related to things like gut health and pain. So if you see a sudden change in your dog's behaviour and suddenly they feel less happy and safe when they're left home alone, that's when we want to make sure we get them checked out by a vet. For some of our dogs, pharmaceutical medication may be required to help them get to the point that we need them to be. But for many of our dogs, natural supplementation alongside behavioural training is the way to go. It's important when we're using natural supplements that they don't sedate the dog, but they allow them to still learn effectively. The Skullcap and Valerian range from Doris to Herbs is great in the way that it reduces anxiety while allowing our dogs to build up positive new emotional responses as we increase the duration that they're left home alone. So how do we help our dogs create that new positive emotional response to being left home alone? Firstly, it's really important that you surround yourself with a support network that could be made up of family and friends or even pet professionals such as sitters and walkers. This is so that we can, in the short term, ensure that our dog isn't actually left home alone unless we're doing our behavioural training. It's also really important that we make sure that our dog's physical and emotional needs have been met outside of alone time. So this is including appropriate exercise, opportunity to toilet, the fact that they've been fed so they're feeling nice and satiated, and that also they've had some sort of mental enrichment. That could be a bit of training, it could be a little bit of sniffing or chewing time, or it could just be a social interaction with you, their human. We can start to build up a little bit of confidence in our dogs by making choices to spend some time solo in the house when we're still there. And this is going to be using some food, whereas we won't be using food in the long run around the actual process of leaving them home alone. So we can start simply by doing some food scatters in one room while we move into the adjacent room, leaving the door open. 
If your dog's quite happy busying themselves snuffling up that food, then we can move on in another situation to actually using something like a long lasting natural chew or a food toy that's gonna to take a little bit more commitment from your dog. When you give them that, just make sure again, you leave the door open between where they're enjoying that food and where you are gonna be hanging out. It's important our dogs have that choice between spending time with us or spending time engaging in that solo activity because that will increase their confidence. So finally, now we're going to be working on our exit strategy. This is where we're helping desensitize our dogs to both our movements around the home and also leaving the home. So while your dog is nice and relaxed and settled and you're sitting nearby them, we want to introduce some small movements. So in the first instance, this might just be you standing up and sitting back down. If your dog can cope with that, then we start to take a couple of steps away from where we're sitting, returning to our seat and then allowing our dog to re-relax. Over many repetitions and training sessions, we're going to build up to where we could not only walk to the door of the room that we're in, but we could eventually touch that door, open it, step through it, close it and spend a little bit of time the other side of that door. But this may take some time and it's vital that we build this up in tiny increments so your dog is starting to just find your movement really boring. Once you're starting to spend time outside of the door that the, the room that your dog is in, that's when we want to make sure we've got that pet camera set up so that we can watch our dog's responses and we can return immediately if they show any stress. Oh. Now that you've got to outside of the room that your dog is in, we can slowly build up towards moving outside of the front door. And again, building this up in tiny increments so your dog is going to feel positive and you're going to be successful in the training. So there we have it, some simple tips to support your dog to feel more positive around alone time through both natural supplementation from Dorist Herbs and also behavioural training. From both myself and the team here at Dorist Herbs, we hope that this has been useful for you and that you've enjoyed this expert series of videos. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.